temperature when soil is melt into liquid is called a melting point. Melting point is a misleading term because it implies that the melting point is one temperature, when really the melting point is a range of temperatures beginning when the product first begins to melt and ending when the product is completely melted. When considering melting point, the force of attraction between the molecules affects the melting point of a compound. Stronger intermolecular interactions result in higher melting point. Ionic bonds are stronger than hydrogen bonds, which are stronger than dipole-dipole interactions, which are stronger than van der Waals dispersion forces. Molecular size affects melting point. When molecules are tightly packed together, a substance has a more higher melting point than a substance with molecules that do not pack well. When other factors are equal, smaller molecules melt at lower temperatures than larger molecules. So, the melting point of the substance depends on the force of the attraction between molecules and the strength of intermolecular interactions, which increase with increasing polarization of bonds. The melting point is a useful property to obtain from products because it can help identify the product if it is unknown or determine the level of impurity in a known product. Pure samples have a narrow range with a 0 to 2 degree range, while an impure sample can have a melting point with over a 5 degree range and are typically much lower than pure samples. In this example, we will be using an aromatic compound, salicylic acid. Salicylic acid is used in the synthesis of analgesics and it has a literature melting point value of 158 to 159 degrees Celsius. To obtain a melting point range of products in the organic chemistry lab, we use a meltemp apparatus. To begin, we will turn on the meltemp apparatus using the on-off button. Then press start temp and use the arrows to set the temperature 20 degrees below the literature value of your sample. Since salicylic acid has a melting point beginning at 158 degrees Celsius, we will set the meltemp apparatus to 139 degrees Celsius. To set the ramp rate, press ramp rate and use the arrows to change the degrees per minute to 2 because you don't want it to take all day. Do the same thing to set the stop temp and set this around 20 degrees above the literature value, although you probably won't need it to go up this high. Once you've done this, press start again and the apparatus should begin to preheat. Now you can prepare your sample. To begin, you will place your sample in a watch glass and obtain a capillary tube, which is a small glass tube with one closed end and one open end. Push the open end of the capillary tube into the pile of sample one time so as not to gather too much sample. Next, you need to push your sample into the closed end of the capillary tube. You will do this using a large glass rod. Place the rod securely on the bench top and drop your capillary tube closed end first into the rod. Repeat this process a few times until the sample is in the closed end of the capillary tube. The sample is now prepared. You can prepare more than one sample at a time. We will do this now. You can use the melting points of two samples to compare the obtained product to a pure sample of the expected product to reveal impurities in the obtained product. Or you can compare the product to the starting material to determine if the reaction actually took place. For example, you could compare the melting point of your aspirin product to salicylic acid with the starting material. The two melting points should be different. Have a pen and paper ready for the next part. When the ready becomes lit on the melting apparatus, insert the capillary tubes into the oven. We will insert one on the far left and one on the far right so they are easier to view, but a third sample could be inserted in the middle. Once the samples are in there, press start to begin the ramp. Watch your sample carefully for signs of melting. Signs of melting include bubbling and collapsing in on itself. When you see the first signs of melting, record the temperature because you don't want to forget it. In case you missed it, here's the melting again. Our sample begins to melt at 157.9 degrees Celsius. Sample continues to melt, and when it reaches 159.5 degrees Celsius, it is completely melted. Now that it has completely melted, we press stop on the meltemp apparatus to begin cooling it. And then we remove the capillary tubes. To properly dispose of capillary tubes, you take them to the glass waste bin. 
and then you need to clean up the rest of your area. Always write down values as soon as melting begins and as soon as melting ends so you don't forget them. Don't put too much sample in the capillary tube. The larger sample size will take longer to melt. Make sure the melt temp apparatus has cooled down from the previous user. Don't turn the ramp speed up too high or you won't be able to tell the temperature of the melting and your range will be wrong. Always report a melting point range because a single temperature will not suffice. If the sample is unknown, run a quick trial run using a 20 degrees per minute ramp rate, and then use the values obtained from this run to get a more precise measurement from a second run at a smaller ramp rate. We hope this has given you the necessary information on melting point determination. Have fun in your lab!